There are those that support sanctions. There's China and Russia that oppose the sanctions, and the rest of the countries are essentially neutral. It's important to remember what the G20 is. The G20 is a consensus organization that was established in 1999 by finance ministers around 2006 to 8. It became a leadership um, event because of the global financial crisis. It exists to solve things that people can agree on on a consensus basis. There's no consensus with regard to Ukraine. So what can we agree on? I'm hoping that there may be some resolution of some of the food issues. Russia has blockaded uh, Ukrainian ports, prevented Ukraine from shipping the food that the world markets need. It has also stolen a lot of grain, and there is some, there is some problem or some, some contention in Turkey about some ships that contain grain. The UN and Turkey are trying to be intermediaries to work some way out so that this food can get to world markets. And I hope that at a minimum, mm -hmm. that's possible. It's possible to do that. In addition to that, there are bilateral meetings that would be possible. The U.S. and China, China and Australia, for example, maybe even Russia and Ukraine. I would like to see something like that happen where some real business can get done. But the bottom line is there will be no consensus agreements, but there's still work that can be done productively. Well, first, let me start by saying that I totally reject the notion that there are three camps at G20. Uh, China's position is no different from many other countries uh, that haven't imposed sanctions on, on this conflict uh, against Russia. Um, as a matter of fact, the trade between China and Russia has been growing very moderately uh, since the war started. Uh, China bought less oil than India did. Um, and that uh, you know, China is not opposed to uh, China's position is not opposed to the, the sanctions imposed so far, but is expressing concerns about imp uh, the implications of these sanctions mm -hmm. in terms of its impact on world energy market, uh, uh, food market, uh, fertilizer market, things like that. And uh, exactly as you pointed out, many uh, developing countries in the third world are caught in the middle, and there's not very little they can do about it. Well, Russia is definitely not interested in causing uh, economic woes or issues uh, with uh, food imports uh, in North Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, or in parts of the Middle East. In fact, a number of those countries uh, are allies or partners of Russia. Uh, in fact, Russia uh, is uh, not blockading those ports. Uh, those uh, ports have been mined by Ukrainian authorities to prevent uh, actions by, Russian, by the Russian Navy mm -hmm. around those ports. Mm -hmm. So essentially, Russia is not going to agree to uh, shipments that are not checked by Russian authorities, because Russia is concerned that uh, ships that would be delivering grain right. would, be, would also be able to deliver weapons, mm -hmm. Western weapons transfers, mm -hmm. to Ukraine. That is completely unacceptable to Russia. Okay. So, uh, essentially, the sooner that the conflict in Ukraine ends, yeah. the sooner the issues around grain shipments will be resolved. 